This strategy should be in your arsenal if you are trading the S&P 500 or any other stock index. In this video, you will learn how you can extract valuable information and apply it to make profitable trades using correlation and combined analysis of S and SPY or NQ and QQQ. First, some information about S, SPY, NQ, and QQQ and why they have a tight correlation. The S&P 500 index, or Standard & Poor's 500 index, is a market capitalization weighted index of the top 500 public companies in the United States. The S&P 500 represents a kind of middle ground, comprehensive enough to show the relative strength or weakness of the economy as a whole but not so comprehensive as to include too much market noise. The S&P 500 is an index of indices, a benchmark adopted by analysts, policymakers, and regular market participants. The S&P 500 includes some of the top companies that are industry leaders and represent the US economy. The S&P 500 index is weighted by market capitalization, giving a higher distribution percentage of companies with the largest market capitalizations. S is an S&P 500 futures contract, and NQ is a NASDAQ 100 futures contract. What is an Exchange Traded Fund, ETF? An Exchange Traded Fund, ETF, is a pooled investment security type that works like a mutual fund. As a rule, ETFs track a specific index, sector, commodity, or other assets. But unlike mutual funds, ETFs can be bought or sold on the stock exchange just like regular stocks. An ETF can be structured to track everything from the price of a single commodity to a large and diverse group of securities. ETFs can even be structured to track specific investment strategies. The first ETF was the SPDRS and P500 ETF, SPY, which tracks the S&P 500 and remains an actively traded ETF today. QQQ is a passive ETF from Invesco that tracks the investment performance of the NASDAQ 100 index. QQQ launched on the 10th of March 1999. Now let's look at the correlation between S and SPY and NQ and QQQ. We will use a bar chart with a one minute time frame for a more accurate comparison. Let's check if the charts are well correlated with one minute intraday chart. Here is a slide where the white chart is S and the orange is SPY. Look closely at how accurately instruments follow each other. It is even difficult to understand which one exactly follows the other. The selected zones A and B will still be helpful to us for a combined analysis of the imbalance in the liquidity of buyers and sellers to obtain the necessary information for trading. We've made sure that the correlation of the first pair is tight. Now, let's look at NQ and QQQ pair. The white chart on the slide is NQ, and the orange is QQQ. Here we also observe a fairly tight correlation, and although the charts are slightly shifted relative to each other, it is again quite a strong correlation. Zones A and B on the chart, which are marked, will also be used for a comparative combined analysis in just a few minutes. Based on the fact that the correlation in such pairs as S and SPY and NQ and QQQ is very tight, we can use the correlation in the liquidity imbalance of both instruments. Comparing the imbalance of buyers and sellers on one instrument and the imbalance of buyers and sellers on another, we can more accurately determine which activity of buyers or sellers is true and which is false. We take a pair of S&P futures and SPY. On one of the instruments, there are completely different imbalances. For example, on the SPY, we have an imbalance of buyers. At the same time, on S&P, there is an imbalance of sellers. Accordingly, we interpret this entry point differently. On the next slide, we will compare the imbalance of NQ and triple Q. We are now taking this part of the chart, area A and comparing it bar after bar. There is a slide in front of you. And now, we are comparing not a bar chart but a cluster chart of NQ. Let's start with the first bar of the five minute time frame. There is an imbalance of sellers under the number one mark. On QQQ, there is an imbalance of buyers, which continues until 10 a.m. on QQQ and until 9 a.m. on NQ. Take into account one hour difference between the two exchanges' time zones. 
As you can see, QQQ buyers imbalances correspond to the trend shown on the chart. A little about the data you see in the lower histogram. This is delta which shows buyers or sellers imbalance. And the second histogram, which is barely visible, is delta percent which displays the imbalance of buyers or sellers in percent. In other words, dominating side. We see an uptrend from 8 to 10 a.m. delta that goes in line with the trend is the delta of QQQ. At the same time, the NQ delta mostly does not correspond to the dynamics between the first and third points. The conclusion follows from this. To confirm the trend, whether we should buy or sell, we compare both trading instruments according to the lower histogram, analyze bar after bar, and make the final decision based on the data displaying triple Q. Now pay attention to point 4. We see a clear uptrend directly till point 4. At 10.40 on triple Q, we have a 12% imbalance on the side of sellers, while on NQ, such an imbalance does not confirm the end of the trend. In point 4, we had a signal to close long position. If you entered the market based on the strong activity of buyers at the beginning of the trading session, then at point 4, you may partially close your position or completely close it. From point 4 to point 5, we observe an imbalance on the seller side on both trading instruments, but on NQ, there were even bursts of 17 and 14% imbalance in some 5-minute bars. And on triple Q, there was one case of 16% imbalance at 10.50. All the rest of the imbalances on the seller's side were not strong enough, which again will allow us to make a decision to keep a part of the position, closely watching what will happen further. Then we had a weak imbalance between points 5 and 6 on both instruments. At point 6, we had a 30% buyer imbalance on triple Q and 10% on NQ, respectively. Then from point 7, there was a good inflow of buyers on QQQ. That is why you can continue to hold the position or open a position based on the information on QQQ. In the following slide, we will take a look at zone B. This is the second part of the NQ and triple Q correlation chart from the beginning of the video. Here we see that the uptrend continues and the first, second and third intervals where buyers activity is high confirm this. We can hold the position up to the fourth and fifth points. And both charts dynamics confirm this. Then we see significant sellers activity on triple Q, which is a clear signal for positions to be closed. We can do it from the fifth to the sixth point. Now let's consider the same thing, the same principles comparing the imbalance on two instruments. In this case, it is S&P and SPY. We take the first part of the chart, zone A, Pay attention to the chart section between point 1 and point 2 on S&P. We see S rising as well as SPY, but the delta on S&P is on the buyer's side, which corresponds to the trend, while on SPY, there is more imbalance on the seller's side. It tells us about the fact that there was a false upward movement on the S and, having reached the price of 412 on SPY, we retested the maximum volume of the last week and, therefore, it was reasonable to take a short position, taking into account the imbalance resumed on the seller's side at point 2, both on the SPY and S&P. It continued until 10 a.m. on S&P and 11 a.m. on SPY. This trade could be made based on the combined analysis of two correlated instruments using imbalances of S&P and SPY. Now let's look at the second part of the chart, Zone B. There was obviously some news here that created extreme volatility. Pay attention to how the two instruments are correlated very tightly, which is noticeable until the close of the trading session. On this chart, you can notice that on S&P, there is predominantly a positive delta. Supposedly it was planned to buy, but SPY was very strongly under the imbalance of sellers. Up to point 5 from point 1, there were mainly strong bursts of volumes from sellers, and we continued to see after point 5 a decline to the close of the trading session. In other words, SPY gave confirmation that it is more reliable than Delta on S&P.